Before the words influencer or creator ever existed, online media started with blogging. Then came MySpace and Facebook to connect with the world, later a chance to go viral on YouTube or Vine by uploading videos. And now we're in the era of Instagram and, of course, TikTok, where you can do it all. The book Extremely Online, the untold story of fame, influence, and power on the Internet, tells the history behind the Internet world and how each online media era revolutionized the next generation. Joining us now is author of the book in Washington, Post technology columnist Taylor Lorenz. Welcome to the show, Taylor. Thank you for having me. So let's first start with I was forgetting that mommy bloggers kind of started all of this. Why do you think that there was such an interest in, in what they had to say and, and that really started creating and, and having all of this influence? Yeah, I think mommy bloggers were the original influencers and we don't think of that. We think, you know, influencing started with YouTubers and teenagers. Um, but in the early aughts, these mothers, these Gen X mothers actually felt like traditional women's media didn't really speak to them. It was this sort of sanitized view of motherhood. So they went online and they started writing these super candid you know, accounts of what their lives were like. A lot of it was anonymous, actually, or pseudonymous. Um, so they weren't giving away some of their real names or the real, real names of their kids. But um, they really changed the conversation around motherhood and normalized things like postpartum depression and struggling to breastfeed, all those tough stuff that you didn't really read about in traditional glossy magazines. Which era would you say really revolutionized the way we think of creators and influencers as we know them today? Well, I'd have to say YouTube, uh, the rise of YouTube, especially in the early 2010s, because you just saw this explosion of, you know, people building audiences suddenly of millions of followers, building these huge, you know, global beauty brands, for instance. Uh, a lot of beauty vloggers, you know, took off in that era. Um, so I do think, yeah, I do think that that era of YouTube kind of normalized this idea. Are you surprised that we ultimately started looking to YouTube to find the next great thing, the next sensation when it came to singers or actors or beyond? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like YouTube very early on allowed people to monetize. They actually rolled out their monetization program in 2007, which was years before other platforms did. Mommy bloggers are of course, monetized as well through ads, um, but it was really nascent in early days. But I think it's the, yeah, the, no platform has transformed entertainment more than YouTube, except maybe TikTok. The shutdown of the video platform, The Vine, shocked a lot of people in the online community. What do you think we can learn from that as far as the, the rise and fall of The Vine? So much. <laughs> Vine was such a transformational short form video app. I mean, it was TikTok before TikTok. It was owned by Twitter. Twitter totally dropped the ball. Um, and the important lesson of Vine is treat your content creators well. Vine really alienated all of its top talent. And that ended up being a huge mistake for the platform because the most popular people on the app said, you know what? You guys aren't going to pay us and appreciate us and roll out features that, you know, help us build sustainable businesses. We're all going to go to YouTube and Facebook and, and elsewhere. And it, app never recovered. What do you think is the future for the online world? Well, I definitely think that we're just, we're all getting more online. And that's why I named my book Extremely Online, because I think actually all of us are getting more online and we're living in a more internet mediated world. Even if you don't post on Facebook or you don't post a single thing, maybe you just got a LinkedIn account and that's it. Um, you know, the elections are being decided by the internet these days. And, you know, you have things, I wrote about the GameStop phenomenon, which is the stock market being manipulated by, you know, online communities. So I just think we're increasingly in an extremely online world, whether, whether we like it or not. And whether we like it or not is my question, really. Is this a good thing? I would say it's good and bad, right? There are really liberatory aspects of um, the internet. I have my career thanks to social media, and I'm so grateful for that. I think a lot of people like these moms have found community online, and that's great. Of course, the downsides are huge. Disinformation, you know, the depression, the mental health effects. I think we're especially be, for kids. And, oh, and absolutely. I think we're going to be grappling with that stuff for a while. Taylor, thank you so much. Want to let our viewers know Extremely Online, the untold story of fame, influence, and power on the internet is now available wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.